Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of My Unfair Advantage. I've got a, uh, an interesting one for you today that I really want you to take notes on, to pay close attention with. This, this is probably one that you're going to refer to a couple of times uh, throughout your career online. And this is one that's going to probably upset you here and there because my goal is to get your mind right when it comes to running an online business the proper way. I'm going to be giving you some very important statistics uh, and I'm going to give you some information that might not sit well with things you've heard in the past from people that were trying to sell you something online. See, I'm not going to try to sell you anything on this particular webinar, on this particular presentation. I just want to educate you. And I'm going to give you the facts the way that you know I like to give them. That is straight up. Whether they heard or they don't, they're the facts and they're important for you to run your business. And a lot of people do the wrong thing and they think they're doing the right thing. So they simply don't know what they don't know. And they're trying to make money online, which is totally different than running an online business. Did you hear what I just said? Making money online and running an online business are two completely different things. And the difference is whether your mind is right or not. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. What is your mindset? Now, listen, don't, I, I know some people right now are like, oh, God. No, listen, this is not going to be some big motivational, you can do it. It's, I'm not, you're not, I'm not going to make you walk across coal. This is not the firewall. I'm not Anthony Robbins. I'm the dude that's going to tell you how it is from experience. And your mindset, the way that you are thinking about business when you're approaching a new endeavor is very, very important. As a matter of fact, it's the most important thing that determines whether or not you're going to succeed or whether you're going to be one of those small business owners that falls into that category, into that majority that fails and that fails quickly and expensively. I don't want you to be that person, but at the end of the day, there's a clear distinction that separates the 7% that make it with their new business and the 93% that don't. There's a very, very clear distinction and it has to do with the mindset. And I'm not talking about, you gotta have positive attitude. All those things are important. Now you, you gotta, you know, yeah, those, but you've gotta be thinking about what you're doing the right way and you've gotta approach things properly. See, one of the biggest problems that uh, online entrepreneurs uh, face, you know, when, when we say the word entrepreneur and then we say the word online, it, you know, we, we start falling into the whole make money online niche. The niche itself, our whole market, our whole industry that we're in is under this pretense of make money online. What do you do for, have you ever, have you ever been asked? by a family member, by somebody, what do you do? And you're like, I don't, you don't know what to talk, uh, uh, you have trouble explaining it. If, if that's you, then you're not running an online business because I can tell somebody the name of my company. I can tell them exactly what we manufacture, what we produce, where we, where, you know, where we're licensed, what we service, what, you know, who our clientele are. I have a business. I run a business. And for, for a lot of people, Making money online is the business. They think that that's what it is. I want to make I want to make a few things clear, um, especially when it comes to mindset. Embarking on a new business venture during a financially unstable time in your life is risky. It's just not a smart move. Think about that. Think about that. Would you go and uh, I don't know join a powerlifting concert when you're uh, currently admitted to the hospital for anemia? No, not the best time in your life to do that. Would you run a marathon? You know what I mean? It's, it's just, it's not the right time to do that. So the problem is that people turn to the internet when they need money and they think I'm going to start a business. When you're, let me tell you something right now. And this is the part that might make you a little upset. All right. If you're having trouble paying your bills, if you're about to lose your house, if you're out of work, I'm going to be the guy that says this to you. It's not the right time for you to venture into a business because it is a business and business requires an investment of your time an investment, a significant investment of your money. It requires a business plan. It requires quite a bit of time and money investment because it's a business. Good business judgment is clouded by financial instability. Everywhere in my business, in the history of my company, where we have not been making the money that we needed, 
and we've just been stretching ourselves too thin. During those times, I made the worst possible business decisions because you're making business decisions and you're, you're embarking on business moves from a position of weakness, right? So for example, if I don't have the money in the bank to hire somebody to get it done right, I may be prone to make the decision to try to do it myself. Doing it myself, though, means I have to watch 40 hours of training videos on how to do it myself. And in the end, when I, what I've created isn't going to come out as good as if I had outsourced that, right? And I would never have made that poor business decision if I had a rich business and I had money in the bank and I had properly budgeted my expenses and I, have, and I was following a business plan, right? So my business judgment and the decisions that I make in my business are clouded by financial instability. And if you are in a time in your life where you're having trouble paying the bills, you're having trouble at home, you you lost your job, you have all this stress, you have this stuff going on around money, what on God's green earth makes you think that this is a good time to invest in a business? Because that's what it is. As a matter of fact, when you decide that you're going to run an online business, you're making an investment that's much more precious than money. See, money you can always make back. You can make more money. Time you can't make back. So anything that you're going to have to invest your time into, shit, when you have got a lot of time on your hands, yeah, it's cool, it's fine, it's no problem, but let me tell you something. When you're having trouble paying your bills, you need all the time you can get. You need all the time to work overtime to do things that are going to get you out of debt now. Nowhere is it written that starting a business gets you profit now. It's not the way that it works. As a matter of fact, most startups don't turn a profit for years. Did you hear what I just said? Most startup businesses don't turn a profit for years. There are so many businesses out there that are not profitable. They're barely keeping the doors open. Their, their owners are simply running it on borrowed money, on to keep maxing out credit cards. They're about to lose everything. They're just, they don't pay themselves. They just pay their employees. Good business judgment is clouded by financial instability. You don't make the wise business decisions and do the things that you need to do to fix business because you're trying to just get by with business. And you get into this downward spiral that inevitably puts you in the majority of people that fail. I hope that makes sense and I hope that resonates with you. There's a difference between having a job and running a business. It's paramount. That difference is paramount. It's huge. A lot of people come from the job sector and they think that the desire to make money outside of a job makes them an entrepreneur. And it does not. I commend you for watching this right now, for being interested in running a, 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 you know, your own business. Maybe you're already there. I don't know. It's impossible for me to know what level you are right now in business or in online marketing or, or whatever it is that you're doing. It's impossible for me to know that. However, I commend you for having the tenacity and the resilience to be watching this right now. However, the fact that you're watching this doesn't make you an entrepreneur. The fact that you want to own a business does not make you an entrepreneur. The fact that you need money and you've turned to the internet to make money online does not make you an entrepreneur or a business owner. What you need is money and like I said earlier, when you're in a mindset that you need money, that I am like, oh my God, I need money, I need money. I need... That is not the time to turn to the internet to try to make money. Does that make sense? Because you're probably saying, oh, well, where the hell? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start clearing this up a little bit more as we move through the slides. Perhaps you heard somewhere that, oh, you can make money online. And you know what? There are a lot of ways to make money online, but Maybe what you need is a job. Maybe what you need is an online job. A lot of times people approach me and I love it when they put a date on it. They say, Omar, you make money online. Blah, blah, blah. I need to make $500 by this week. I need to make, I need $500 by Friday. What can I do to make $500 by Friday? You know what my answer to them is? My answer to them is get a job. So I already have a job, but I need another $500. Okay, so get a second job. Get a part-time job. Go do something else. Go work. Are you working on the weekends? I'm working every single day of the week. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ugh. That's tough. That's tough. Then what you need is counseling. You need financial counseling. You need somebody to help you manage the money that you're getting better. I think you're overspending because if you're working every single waking hour and you're working hard and you've got three jobs and you're either ridiculously in debt and you need financial counseling, you need help. 
Uh, but starting a business is not the answer to your freaking problems right now. It's going to compound them because it's going to take you away from where you need to be spending your hours to take care of your family and financial obligations. Did that just piss you off that I said that? Are you getting mad or are your eyes starting to open up? And are you looking at this now like an entrepreneur and saying, wow, kind of makes a little bit of sense there. Maybe there's a little bit of, of me in that. I, I might be, you know, if you think I'm talking about you right now, I hate to say it, but I probably am. The make money online mentality will cripple your chances of establishing a solid long-term business. The make money online mentality that I can just go online and make money is going to hurt you because you can, you can go online and you can get an online job. You can go to Fiverr. And you could start selling things on Fiverr, like, you know, I don't know, I can shoot a little funny video myself and post it on Fiverr and make $4 every time somebody asks me to do one. You can go and find time for money jobs on there. You can, but what ends up happening to people is they go on there maybe looking for some side income, thinking, well, maybe there's something that I can do online. Maybe there's a come and in their search, they get hit with build a business. They get hit with the sales page. Hey, push my button. You'll get rich. They get hit with, and then they start joining things. They start multi-level marketing things. They start, you know, all this. They get these testimonials. They get all this stuff. And they start thinking about, wow, you know, how am I going to, to really make money if I, I, I'm doing all these other things, right? How, how the hell do I, uh, how the hell do I actually get to the point where I'm supporting my family uh, from from what I'm making online. How do I do that? Uh, how come I'm not making money? Well, you need to make a clear distinction. You need to get your mind right. And you need to determine, okay, well, am I looking for a part-time job and hoping that I can find that job on the internet? Am I looking for a work from home opportunity? And it's very tough to find something like that and not fall victim to the prey, uh, you know, to the predators rather, uh, uh, online trying to get you to give them $27 for their ebook that's going to make you rich by tomorrow. And what ends up happening is a lot of people set out to make that extra money online and they get fall into this trap and they start buying this and learning this course and, and doing the other thing and getting the other. And you know what? The funny thing is that a lot of us as entrepreneurs, a lot of us as overachievers, we have this mindset that's all wrong. We have this mindset that's all wrong. If I challenged you, and if I challenged you to use your critical thinking skills, and I said to you, okay, I'm going to give you a challenge right now. Uh, within 24 hours, you need to be at LAX airport, from regardless of where you are on the planet. Within 24 hours, you need to be at LAX airport. And uh, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I don't, I don't, it's, it's life or death. This is the challenge. You're an adult. Use everything in your power to get there. Even if you have zero dollars in your pocket or in your bank account, this is, depending on how important it is to, to accomplish this challenge, you'll either get there or you won't, right? And now is when your critical thinking skills go into play, right? And you start thinking, okay, what the hell am I going to do here? Okay, well, first thing I know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to buy a ticket, right? I'm going to have to find a plane. I got to be there within 24 hours. Okay, uh, I've got $67 in my bank account. I've, oh crap! Let me see what's the cheapest ticket I can buy. Ah uh, man, it's going to cost me $342. Okay, uh, where can I borrow this money? Where can I borrow? Okay, I know Freddie, my neighbor. I already owe him 20 bucks. Man, my aunt, maybe somebody can lend me the money. Blah blah blah. You know, this is how an adult solves a problem. This is how conventional wisdom uh, helps you get to where you need to be in life. This is how you survive. This is the, the, the normal problem solving, you know, tactic that a normal adult uses. You know what happens to us as entrepreneurs, as, as overachievers, when it comes to make money online? Here's what happens. Same exact scenario. You start looking online for, uh, okay, I got to get on a plane. Oh, I got no money. All right. Well, let me see if I, oh, wow. Look at this. It says, it says, build your own plane. Only free, it's free. It's free. I could build my own plane. Be, build your own plane. And look, it could take, uh, once I build, okay, let me grab that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it's free. And start reading the free report. Now you're eight hours into this and you're like, oh, wow. Well, look, if I buy for only, I've got $67 already for, for another thing, I get the kit. And they'll send, I can get, I can get the kit. This is how an overachiever starts thing. And then you fall into this trap where, okay, I'm going to build the plane myself. You know, because I can't, instead of going down the conventional, you know, wisdom, uh, you know, road and, and finding the money, putting together the budget, putting together the plan to get yourself to California. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Because that is the, 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 the uh, you know, that's just the mindset that 
cripples your chances of establishing a long-term business. It's the reason why 93%, I'm not, I'm not pulling this number out of my ass, the 93% of people, of small businesses that fail within a year are mostly because of this sort of an issue, okay? And I'm going to give you the source of these statistics, okay? The U.S. Department of Commerce, as of the time of this video, failure rates for your business. And this is real stuff, and this is smacking you right in the face, so I hope that you that you see what's going on here. Annual revenue, if, if the business is making less than $250,000 a year, there's a 93.1% chance that you're going to fail. 93% chance that you're going to fail within one year. Less than 25,000 per year, there is a 57% chance that you are going to fail. Within three years, 62% of all businesses that start up are closed within four years, 55%. Is that crazy? Is that ridiculous? Where in there do you fall? I fall into the 7%, the 6.9% that actually makes it. I've been around quite a while now. That doesn't mean that I'm insulated. There's businesses that go out of, you know, that, that go out of business after 10 years, right? And um, it's important for you to, uh, to realize that this is reality, right? And the chances are stacked against you. New York Times top 10 reasons why small businesses fail and we're going to talk a little bit about these i'm not going to spend all my time on this uh but i think it's important for us to to kind of understand this the first reason the math just doesn't work right there, there's just not enough demand for the product or the service at a price that will actually produce a profit for the company uh, you know, for example, if you've got a startup that's trying to compete with Best Buy next door or something like that, you know, you just don't have the buying power to offer the particular product to the market at a price that'll compete with other prior established businesses, right? So the math just doesn't work. The owners, uh, that, that just can't get out of their own way, right? Uh, maybe stubborn, maybe, uh, you know, averse to risk. Uh, meaning they, they need to be liked by everyone, even employees and vendors, and, and they, they may be perfectionist, greedy, self-righteous, paranoid, indignant, or insecure. This is stuff I'm getting from the New York Times. Is that you? Did I just, did I just mention you? How about out-of-control growth? Now, this is, this is probably sad. I, I got to say, this is probably one of the saddest reasons to fail. A successful business that's ruined by over-expansion, growing too fast, right? Or just, you know... Basically, uh, borrowing too much money in an attempt to, to grow in particular at a particular rate. You know, sometimes less is more. You know, sometimes dominating in, in, in a little pond is a lot better than trying to, you know, grow a big ocean. How about poor accounting? I know I've been a victim of this. Poor accounting. You cannot be in control of a business if you don't know what's going on. If, if, you're, if you've got bad numbers or no numbers or a company is just flying blind and, and it happens all at the same time. Uh, it, it happens uh, all too often. Uh, for one thing, it's it's uh, it's it's disastrous. It's it's just disastrous, and it's a misconception that an outside accounting firm uh, is gonna is gonna keep a watch over your business. You have to be on top of the numbers. Um, you know, poor accounting is is a big reason, according to the New York Times. Um, lack of a cash cushion. That's what we were just talking about a minute ago. If we've learned anything from the recession, it's that. Uh, you know, there, there's a, a lot of issues out there. It's, it's that a business is cyclical and that bad things can and will happen over time. The loss of an important customer or critical employee, uh, the arrival of a new competitor, the filing of a lawsuit. Things happen. Things come up that are unpredicted. And you, if you don't have a cushion, if you don't have money, if you're not in a stable position financially, then you're not going to be able to roll with the punches there. You're going to lose your business. You're going to fall into the majority that fail. Operational mediocrity. Have you ever met a business owner that described their own operation as mediocre? <laughs> no, right? But we can't all be above average. So there you've got a problem there where denial, right? And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs they just don't know, and you know what? You know why? Uh, you know the statistics about business failure are usually inaccurate. It's because they're usually compiled. The people that are asked about the reasons for failure, they ask the actual business owner. If if the business owner knew why they failed, 
they wouldn't have freaking failed. So these, these estimates and these studies and these things where you hear, you got to really be careful about the advice. Oh, we polled 10 business owners to find out why they failed. And they told you, if they knew why they freaking failed, they would still be in business. So you, here you're taking advice to open your business based on the information from other people that have failed. Huh? I think about that, right? Operational mediocrity. What's another one? Operational inefficiency. Paying too much for rent, paying too much for laborers, for materials, more than ever. Uh, lean companies are an advantage now, you know, uh, not having tenacity or stomach to negotiate terms that are reflective of today's economy may leave a company uncompetitive. Are you fighting to get the best deals on things? Are you hunting to get the best price on the tool that you need? Everybody is looking to close that sale right now. If you're just paying, you know, face value for things and not really being frugal, uh, you know, you're, you're not being efficient. You're being inefficient and it's going to cost you your business. How about dysfunctional management? Lack of focus, vision, planning, standards are everything else that, uh, standards and everything else that go into good management. Again, right from the New York Times here. Um, throw fighting partners or unhappy, throw fighting partners or unhappy relatives into the mix and you have a disaster. How about the lack of a secession plan? Now we're talking about power struggles, significant players being replaced by people who are in over their heads. All reasons why family businesses do not usually make it to the next generation. And number 10, a declining market. According to the New York Times, bookstores, music stores, printing businesses, and many others are dealing with changes in technology. I talk about this a lot in my I Am Evolution webinar. Consumer demand and competition from huge companies with more buying power and advertising dollars. There, there, you know, you've got to face the fact that Things are changing. Times are evolving. There's new technology coming out all the time. And if your business, if you're keeping all your eggs in that one basket and then all of a sudden somebody builds a, a better basket or better egg or whatever, you just lost your advantage in your marketplace. If you haven't been cultivating other opportunities and you know, looking outside of your current market, you're not going to be able to weather a decline. All stuff right out of the New York Times. If you go and, and look this up on the New York Times blog, top 10 reasons why small businesses fail. Let's take it to the next level. Why did you turn to the web for income? Is it quick money that you need? I mean, really, if, if, if you're just in a, in, a, in a, you know, like, oh my God, I need 500 bucks. Like that person that said to me, man, I need 500 bucks right now. My car is going to be repossessed. You know what you should do? You should probably go to one of those payday loans uh, places and, and see if they'll give you a $500 advance on your next check. You know, I'm not ashamed to admit that Melinda and I had to do that several times when we were first married. It was tough. It was tough. And we had the car broke down. We had no money in the bank. I need, you know, $400. I got to get it out of the mechanic so that I can get to work, you know, and, and, and it's like, okay, well, let's do this advance. And, you know, you've got to manage that very carefully. If not, you're just like always paying in advance. You know what I mean? And uh, you, you got to be really quick, you know, but is it quick money? That, is that why you turn to the internet for income? Because if that's the case, then you need to ask yourself, are you really looking for an easy part-time job? You know what I mean? So did you realize like, well, I'm not making enough money at work. I need to make more money. Let me turn to the internet. Maybe what you should be looking for on the internet is maybe you should be going to one of those resume websites and looking for a job. So yeah, you're using the internet to make money, but you're using it to find a job interview that you're going to go on to try to work two hours a day. Or maybe you might be fortunate enough to find a legit part-time job that you can work from home that you can get a, re a reliable, steady paycheck. Let me tell you something. There's nothing reliable about an entrepreneur's income when he starts, period, period. And anybody that tells you different is lying to you or trying to get you to buy something. We as entrepreneurs starting up businesses have to be willing to go without getting paid ourselves for quite a while. We have to be willing to take the hits. We're willing to, to, to claim the rewards and because we're willing to, to, to take those chances, because we're willing to actually do today what the average person isn't willing to do, we have tomorrow what the average person doesn't have. I didn't write that. I heard it somewhere once, but it makes all the sense in the world. Is it an investment opportunity that you need? Like, what, I, I don't know why you turn to the web for income. Maybe you're a baby boomer. Maybe you have some retirement money. Or maybe you just have, you know, some money saved up and you realize, well, I don't want to work anymore. I've got, you know, 30000 in the bank and it's only going to last me a couple of years, if that. Uh, I, I need to do something with it. 
Well, I think you should be talking to a financial planner. You shouldn't be buying ebooks. You, you know, you, you, you've got to be careful because you'll fall into a trap where you're going to get the first call center that calls you up and promises you to coach you on how you're going to be making $3,000 a week in no time. And what in, and what in essence you're going to do is you're going to tap out all your credit cards and you go through your $30,000 and the guy teaching you on the other line is making 10 bucks an hour. And you, the whole time, have failed to realize this. You failed to realize that you're going to school right now to learn how to build a, a six-figure business and the guy teaching you isn't making six figures. You're into this six months and, and it's not until you're out of money that you start really asking the tough questions like, well, wait a second, how much money have you made, right? Because we're in the wrong mindset. Is it an impulse decision that you made, right? Are you just looking to get rich quick? Did you, were you surfing for something and all of a sudden come across a video like, oh, wow, let me click on this ad. Oh, wow, I can make, I can get rich tomorrow. And then all of a sudden you start buying this, you start buying that, you got information overload. Where, where, where do you fit in and, and why did you turn to the internet? And are you past the point of no return? Are you at the point now where you're just doing it because you're like, shit, man, I've just, I've spent so much money just, just, you know, buying stuff and buying stuff and buying stuff. My wife is going to divorce me. My husband is not going to take this anymore. I can't quit now. But man, I just need that one more. Are you still looking for that magic button? Are you, you really think that's out there? Do you really think that the reason you're not making today the money you deserve is because that secret product has eluded you all this time? Is that what you think? That the secret to success continues to elude you? Is that what you think? Oh, well, he's made it because this, that, and the other thing. Oh, well, he, it was easy for him. Oh, well, yeah, he can make money. He's got a list. Oh, well, are you that person? Because if you are, you need to get out. You need to go find a job. Because that's not the mentality. You need to get your mind right. Let's talk a little bit more about the steps. Now, this is stuff that I got from the U.S. Small Business Administration. Pretty cool site. Uh, and if you go there... They've got some very informative, uh, informative articles, okay? Uh, it's sba.gov, Small Business Administration. And they're talking about the 10 steps to starting an actual business. And the number one thing, the very first step that they say, I think I've been saying this like forever. And so many people don't do this. And it's, it's probably the biggest reason why they fail. Write a business plan. Like write a freaking plan for your business. How hard is that? There's four components to every journey, period. I don't care how you assemble. I, there's four components to every journey. You got to have a start point and you got to have an end point. You got to know where you're going and you got to know where you're starting from. You got If you don't have those two things, you're not on a journey, okay? There's two things in between that you need. You got a start point and you got an end point. You need a map. You need to know how to get there. And you need a vehicle. You need a way to get there. Start point, a vehicle, a map and a destination. If any one of those things is missing, you're going to fail. You're not going to get to where you want to go. Do you understand that? You're not going to get to where you want to go. If you don't know where you are on the map, where your start point is, you are not going to be able to get to where you're going. If you do not have a map itself, directions, where to turn, how to go there, what if this happens, uh, this, you know, you're not going to be able to find the place you're trying. If you don't have a vehicle, it doesn't matter whether you're, you're, if you're, if you're walking, your feet is the vehicle. You know, if you got, you, you got to have those four things. Are you with me? Do you understand that? Well, a business plan is those four things for your business. When, you know, when you write a book report, you need an outline. I mean, there's a structure to things. When you're shooting a bow and arrow when you're, you're in an archery, you got to have a target. You got, if you're not, then you're just shooting blindly in the air. Do you have a target? Do you have a plan to hit that target? The second thing, uh, the second step to starting a business is get business assistance and training. So many of us think like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a business. Uh, I have a skill. I'm, I, I'm a basket weaver. I weave baskets and I'm going to start selling my... Just because you're a damn good basket weaver doesn't mean that you can run a business, bro. You need to be able to run that business. You need to, there's things that come with running a business uh, that you need to know or else all your basket weaving money is going to be, you know, you know, it's just going to be wasted. Uh, you got to choose a business location. So a lot of us are doing business online, um, but are you working at home? Because if you are, then you need to set yourself up. So when I look at this from the 
uh, from the SBA. Again, it's not tailored specifically to online businesses, but that was very important for me. I had to have my workspace. I had to proper, you know, I had to set up my work area because it's a business. How about this? Number four, this is a big one. How are you going to finance your business? That's a big step. Financing your business. Are you going to get a loan for your business? I don't care if it's an online business. There's expenses, man. It's a business. Determine the legal structure of your business. Is it going to be an LLC? Is it going to be a corporation, an S corporation? You're doing business. You need to have, you know, that legal stuff in place as well. You got to register your business name. You know, you've got to get a tax ID number. You got to register and get a local uh, license to do business. You got to register for your state and local taxes. Melinda and I, for our business, we pay quarterly sales tax for the state of Florida. We have to. And he said, just because you're doing business on the internet, what if you have a customer from Florida that buys your product online? You owe the state of, of Florida money for sales tax, right? You, you, depending on the state that you're doing business in. Um, you still got to file income tax for your business. It's different than personal tax, right? If you made more than $600 this year, trust me, from, from online, which is, which is easy to do and which is your goal, then you should be thinking ahead already. You should be thinking, I'm going to need to file taxes. How am I going to do that? You need to look into that. Have you even considered these things? And if you haven't, then what the hell makes you think that you're running a business? You need to understand employer responsibilities. That's another thing. Now, we, we do employ a virtual staff. Most of what we do is by 1099, but this is very important. If you're hiring people, if you're going to have expenses, you need to keep track of all of that because that's all tax deductible now. If you don't, you're going to have a big tax liability at the end of the year and you can't claim, well, I spent this money on buying graphics, I spent this money on this fee, I spent this on hosting, I spent this on that. You know, if you have people doing work for you or if you're paying affiliates, that's a business expense. An affiliate has to get a 1099 form. They're an independent sales contractor. They are selling for you. These are things that you need to consider and these are the 10 steps to starting a business. I have to say, writing a business plan is the number one thing that most of us lack. It's the biggest reason why most of the people in this particular space fail. Let's talk about that one, writing a business plan. Again, you can find this information at the Small Business Association website, and that is sba.gov. A business plan is an essential roadmap for business success. This is a living document, so it, it continues. I mean, it just, it, it, you always have this, you always look at this, and it should project three to five years ahead. It should outline the route that a company needs to take in order to go, grow revenue. Does that make sense? Do you have that? Have you sat down and planned that, or are you just, oh, well, I'm building a website. Ooh, I got WordPress. Are, is that you? I'm not doing it to make fun. I'm doing it to smack some sense into you because I want you to succeed, and I want you to make money. And sometimes the answer to making money is not starting an online business. It's going and getting another job until you're in a position where you can make good business decisions and actually invest time and money into a business. These are the components of most business plans. But let me tell you something. I don't want you to freak out. A business plan could just be you know, a couple of sheets of paper, you and your notebook. An executive summary. Your executive summary is a snapshot for your business plan as a whole. And it touches on your company profile and your goals. Uh, you should read the tips that they have at the Small Business Administration, uh, sba.gov, to learn about how to do these things, okay? Company description. Your company description provides information on what you actually do, what differentiates your business from other business, uh, and uh, what markets are your business, uh, you know, is your business serving? What, what, what's your ideal target market? Market analysis, this is huge. This is so many screw this up. So many, and this is the main reason that people build a website and then their next problem is, what's the next question? Have you built, well, how do I get traffic to my website? Oh, Jesus Christ. If you, if you had done research first, you wouldn't have this problem. You would have found the traffic first, then created the product for the traffic. I, I teach this all the time and people just like, oh, well, I need traffic. Uh, market analysis. Before launching your business, it's essential for you to research your business industry, the market, the competitors. Are there are, are people spending money in this market? Am I going to be able to find affiliates in this market? Is this a is this a business venture that is just way too competitive? Are you in the travel niche where you're like 
you know, you're going to bid on the, you know, keyword vacation and it, it costs like, I don't know what it's up to now, it's like $800 a click or whatever, you know what I mean, or whatever it is, I, I'm, I'm pulling that number out of my ass, but you get the point. Market analysis, sometimes, you know, being a little, little fish in a huge ocean is not a good idea. You know, why not find a really, really targeted sub-niche uh, that, that has specific, you know, may, maybe still in the travel industry, maybe, maybe it's like, uh, you know, how to sell... Um, travel packs or water bottles for people that are going to Disney on vacation or something like you know what I mean? Uh, I, I don't know, but very, very nicheified, very, very tailored where you can see, okay, look how many people are actually searching for this particular thing online on a weekly basis. There's this amount of people. This is the their, the, the target demographic. These are the, the, the websites that they frequent. These are the forums that they're in. This and, and now you've found the traffic. You know where the people are. You can find them so that you can put your product in front of them once your product is ready. Most people go about this the wrong way. Like, oh, what do I like? Oh, I like basket weaving. I'm going to create a product about underwater basket weaving. Yeah, that'll be cool. Has that been done before? No, nobody's done that. Oh, we're going to rock. Underwater basket weaving. Then you're wondering, oh, how do I get traffic to my site? Nobody needs that. You're an idiot. Market analysis. Do your research. Are you in the right market? How about organization and management? Every business is structured differently. Find out the best organization and management structure for your business. These are all parts of writing a business plan, and there's more. Your service or product line, what do you sell? How does it benefit your customers? Well, obviously, if you're going to answer the question of how does it benefit your customers, we need to know who our customers are, so we need to have done some market analysis, some research, right? What are you going to sell? So many people... Are, are asking themselves the wrong question. They don't, you see, they don't have a business. If you were, if you were actually asking yourself the right question, if you were to buy a business right now, you were to buy a franchise, let's say you started looking at franchises, oh, well, I'm going to open a McDonald's. I'm going to start a McDonald's business. You'd have to go research that. Well, what am I, I'm going to sell McDonald's. Or I'm gonna, oh, well, maybe I want to sell Subway sandwiches. Maybe I want to sell this, right? It's going to be, you're opening up a business. So you got to figure out, okay, well, who's my market? Where am I putting up my shop? Where's my store? How much is it going to cost me to join the franchise? How much is it going to cost? You know what I mean? These are the kind of things that, that are important for you to, uh, uh, to be factoring in when you're determining, well, what, what's my service? What's my product line? What am I going to be doing? What's the cycle? Uh, that's another thing. What's the product life cycle? Am I going to have to be coming up with a new product every three months? Uh, you need to have to get, get some tips on how to tell the story about your product or service. What exactly is it that you're doing? Marketing and sales. See, this is the part. This is the one part where the internet comes in. Where am I going to do my internet marketing and my selling? Where am I going to do my, you know, the marketing and selling for my business? I'm going to use the internet to do a big part of that. See, a lot of people turn to the internet first. They think, okay, that's the business. No, that's not the business, dude. This is the business. This is part of making the plan. The internet is a tool. It's one of the many things in running a business that you use. How do you plan to market your business? What's your sales strategy? You need to read more about this, and you can find out a lot about this. Um, and, and put this information in your business plan. And the other thing is, if you don't know how to do this, you need to fa factor in how I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it. Is there, am I buying a franchise that already has the marketing plan and the sales strategy in place for me? They already have the marketing material. They already have that stuff there. Or do I have to create it? Do I literally have to create the market? Do I have to create the marketing and test the marketing? Right? And, and sometimes when we, we, we start this business online, we want to wear all the hats. Right? You want to literally create a market that's never been done before. People are like, they're excited when they find a keyword or they find a product idea or something that's never been done before. They're excited about that because they know nothing about business and they don't realize that now they literally have to build the market. They have to create the branding. They have to attract the people and create an interest around it. Do you know how expensive and time consuming that can be for your brilliant idea that no one's done before? How does it make business sense to get into that when you don't have money to pay your mortgage this month. Are you following me? Am I negging you out? Because that's not what I, I, I'm intending to do here. I really want to help you. I want to get you to the next level. You know, there's funding out there. There's funding out there for businesses. Let me tell you, if there's funding out there for people that don't want to work, trust me, there's funding out there for people that do. Find out about the necessary information and include that in your plan. You know, you might be able to get grants uh, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do, you know, um, with, with funding in particular, you can, you can get, um, uh, federally underwritten grants and, and you can get all kinds of things, uh, you know, startup stuff, 
Uh, you know, there's all kinds of help out there for entrepreneurs. There's business loans. There's all kinds of things that you can do uh, when you're when you're looking to start a business. All right. Um, provide a financial projection. Uh, if you need funding, providing a financial projection to back up your request is critical. Find out what information you need to include with your financial projections for small business or if there's a particularly fun, federally underwritten grant that you're going to get. And this is just money from the government that the government's giving you to help you start a business. You know, especially here in the United States, our government is very fond of giving money to people that don't want to work for it. Uh, so trust me. They're going to give you money if you are willing to work for it, but there's certain information that you need. A business plan is definitely going to be one of them. Uh, but are, do you have the tenacity? Do you have the resilience to actually do this, to assemble a plan, to actually run your business like a business or not? What makes you think that you can run your business like a hobbyist and that it's still going to pay you like a CEO? What on God's green earth made you think that you can go and just put in, oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to do my little internet marketing thing on my computer? It made you think you were going to be wealthy. Come on now. And an appendix. An appendix is optional, but it's a useful place to include information like resumes, permits, leases, uh, and additional information that you should include in your appendix. Again, uh, you should go and look into this for your particular business. The Small Business Administration, SBA.gov is where I got this, uh, this stuff. I didn't write this or make this up on my own, and I'm not an attorney uh, or a financial planner. I'm giving you these tips and tricks uh, these things that are being suggested by other uh, you know, establishments and other uh, institutions. And uh, I don't want you to freak out, okay? Don't freak out. If I can build a business that's pushing seven figures at the time that I'm recording this, uh, seven figures yearly income. I mean, altogether, if you add since we started in business, we've made over $3 million. Uh, if I can do that from a spare bedroom, trust me, there's no reason why anybody watching this, including you, can't do this. But you got to get your mind right. Determine what you really need in your life right now. What you really need, dude. Okay? Do you need money to pay the groceries this week? Or do you need a business plan to start working your business and develop a six-figure uh, six uh, business? Right? And there's a big difference. And if you don't have the conviction to make that decision, then you probably don't have the responsibility to run your own business. Because if you can't realize, you know, in your own life, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not ready to realize, okay, well, wow, if I don't go out and get something part-time right now, I'm not going to be able to pay my rent. I might get kicked out. Uh, I'm going to fall behind. I'm going to do this. Then maybe you don't have the financial mindset yet to run a business because you, let me tell you something, you're going to be managing money. You're going to be doing stuff like that uh, with your business. You got to understand that starting a business requires money and time. Heck, even, even a hobby that's not going to give you a profit requires money and time. You damn skippy a business, Will. Why do you feel that, you know, uh, I, I mean, let's say you took up, I don't know, any kind of exercise as a hobby or any kind of sport as a hobby. It's going to take your time. It's going gonna, it's gonna to require you to get the gear, the knee pads, the helmet, whatever. Let's say bicycling. You know, you need a bike. You need, even going to the gym is going to require a gym membership, right? You're okay with starting a hobby that's going to produce zero revenue for you. It's going to chew up a bunch of time and just cost you a bunch of money. But when it comes to a business that's going to make you money, you want to be able to do it for free. I don't know. I want to get the free report. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to look for the free tools. What the hell is going on in your head? You think you're running a business? No, you're not. Understand that it's going to be a lot more work and a lot less pay than any job. Being an entrepreneur and starting a business is going to be a lot more work and a lot less pay than any job at first. And I'm going to stress the at first. Because you know what? I personally am 13 credits shy of my doctorate. If you ask me my specialty, it even freaks me out to say it. Neurosurgery. I actually have a, mis a master's in critical care and emergency medicine. And I was studying to be a neurosurgeon. You know what? Today I make a lot more money than most neurosurgeons. And that's a fact. So I want to stress to you that it's the reason I am where I am is because I was willing to work more than the average guy for a lot less money. While my friends were saying, dude, you're doing that? Bro, UPS is hiring right now. They need drivers. That's a good job. You get good benefits. It's like $19 an hour. And you get dental and optical. 
dude, that you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's a totally different mindset, you know, uh, and you need to understand that there are a lot of forms of online work out there. Maybe, maybe starting a business online is not particularly your cup of tea. Maybe you're a graphic designer. Maybe you have a specific skill that you want to cultivate. Maybe you love building websites and you want to just create a job out of out of building websites or you want to create a job for yourself out of maybe designing graphics for people. And you might apply to some people that are internet marketers already and say, hey, I, this is what I do. I'd like to be your graphic designer. Or I'd like to be your uh, content provider. I'm great at writing eBooks or I'm great at transcription. I'm great at content creation. I'm great at any number of these things. I want to cultivate that one particular skill. And then I want to offer that service to other people. Maybe you're a good virtual assistant. Maybe you're a good social media manager and you want to go and post for companies on Facebook all day and update their blogs and things like that. Maybe what you need is work online. Now you're making money online and you're not running your own business, right? Understand that there's a difference and there's a lot of forms of online work out there. Create a plan, create a schedule, create a budget. If you're serious about running a business, it could be as simple as tearing a page out of a notebook, sitting down with a cup of coffee and a clear head, and writing down a plan. What is my goal? What do I want to do? What, okay, what's my business going to be? What's my product idea? What am I going to, you know, what's my budget? What do I have available? What do I need? Uh, how much money am I going to need to get this plan, this business plan to fruition? How much of that is already available? Okay, I don't have enough, so I'm going to need to go and look at alternative financing methods. Have you sat down with yourself and a cup of coffee maybe and just, and just work, uh, worked out a plan? And once you create that plan, you need to work your plan, you need to stick to your schedule, and you need to not overspend your budget. Let me tell you something, and I hope that I leave you on a very positive note. When I started building my business, I ran it like a business from day one. My company had a name. My company had a sales department, a marketing department. It had a customer service department. It had a research and development department. I was the head of all those departments and the only employee of each department, but I created a schedule and every day I worked an hour in this department, an hour in that department, an hour in the other department until I was able to replace myself in this one and outsource that one and then replace myself in that one. I worked it like a plan. You'll go to work all day for someone else and work with structure. You'll have daily reports that you give your boss, weekly reports, you'll stick to a schedule, you take your breaks at a certain time, you do this, you get this accomplished, you have goals, you have things that you do at work for someone else. But then when it comes down to you and your business and what's really gonna make the difference in your life, you have no plan. You sit down, you spend the time on Facebook and you wonder why the hell I'm not, you know, my project isn't done yet. You need to create a plan, a schedule and a budget for yourself. You need to work your plan, you need to stick to your schedule, you need to not overspend your budget. I hope that this helps you in creating a true online business. There's no better feeling than removing the factor of money from the equation of your life. No matter of where you are in life or where you are in the business creation process, you might just need an extra $500 a month. You might be looking to make an extra $5,000 a month. You might be looking to build a six-figure business that you can will to your kids. You might be trying to pay for your kids' college. What I'm saying is do it smartly, have some common sense, and do some, some you know, problem solving like adults would do. And look at this for the serious opportunity that it is. It's a business. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.